Hey folks, welcome back. Alex here. Docker. Docker is a pretty popular topic. On this channel, a lot of you are requesting Docker materials. So I've got the new Mac Studio. I've also got the Alienware, which is an Intel box. It's got an Intel Core i9, 12,900KF, a beast of a machine. These two desktops, so far anything I've thrown in them, they just sneezed at it and they didn't even budge. So here's what I want to do today. I want to run a real project because we've been doing a lot of benchmarks and tests and sample projects, whatever. I'm going to do a real project. This is a project that actually is one of mine. I'm working on it. So I wanted to see how much it'll improve my own performance, my own speed. And uh, typically I run this project. I know. I know you're gonna yell at me. Okay, this is my Intel MacBook Pro. Why do I use this one still? Well, I just I haven't switched this project yet to this machine. I know it's easy, it's easy, but I can do it later. So what I did was I have the project here and I did a Docker build with no cache. And this one took 190 seconds to complete. That's the number to beat. Who can do it faster? We will see. Now, the next test, if you want to skip to that part, I'll leave chapter markings down below. That one is going to be actually a benchmark, a sample application, I should say, not a benchmark, a sample application created by the Docker team themselves. And you've already seen me run this before where I compared the M1 versus the M1 Max. And these are the laptops that actually did uh, show signs of suffering when I threw this kind of stuff at them. But you know, they're laptops. These two are desktops. What's that app all about? The sample app? Well, it's got five different machines. It's a voting app, right? So it's got five different uh, containers talking to each other. There's a container running Python instance. Uh, there's a backend running Node.js. There's a Redis cache, a Postgres SQL instance, and a .NET worker. All those machines and containers working together. And in my last video where I spun that up, we did 100 instances of that. So we're going to try to max that out, and that's going to be in the second part of this video. All right, so on my Intel machine here, this is a beast and a powerhouse. No doubt about it. It's also pretty loud, and it's drawing a significant amount of power. 68 watts versus the 10 watts that's being drawn by the Mac Studio right now while just sitting there idling. Let's spin this up. Let's do a build on this machine first. I've already cloned my repository and I'm going to run Docker Compose Build and we're going to do um, dash dash no cache. Hey, that rhymes. Docker Compose actually spits out the time that it takes to build this. I should say the build command spits that out. So we're going to not use any time command to time it separately. I'm just going to use and trust that command. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. Docker compose, build, dash dash, no cache. And uh, by the way, if you're interested in what versions of everything I'm running, Docker engine is at 20.10.13, and both of these machines are on that, so there we go. I also noticed that I have this project running right now, so I'm going to stop it first docker compose down now it doesn't matter build will still rebuild the containers but i just want to make sure that we're starting from scratch docker compose down okay we're good to go here's a little friend schwarzenegger the schwarzenegger i should say and just before i run this i want to say that um, all the images are already local so i've already cloned this and ran this but uh, i did not see how long it takes to build it so we're gonna see that right now and maybe i'll be surprised everybody remember how this thing works so we got uh, fingers, we're gonna try to line up the enter keys and do this at the same time. Yeah, I know, I know, it spits out the time anyway, so this is just for a little bit of fun. Luckily, there's only two computers involved in this test. And let's go, they're off to the races. So this might actually significantly improve my workflow. However, building Docker Compose images from scratch is not something you do on a daily basis, of course. If you work with Docker, you know that. You do this once in a while. Most of the time, you're just working with the containers that are already built and just changing the application code as you're working the project. So this is not an operation that you run every day, but it's still nice to know which one of these will be faster. Now, while this is running, I just want to say that we've got 27, 28 watts on the Mac Studio and 127, 124 to 127 from the Intel machine. So a pretty significant difference going on there while this is being built. Okay, we're at 110 seconds, folks, and it's still building. At this point, <laughs> neither one of these is really shaving that much time. Okay, the Intel box is done. Mac Studio is still working. 
That's the M1 Ultra chip. Wow, that one is still building. Okay, now they're both finished. Let's take a look at the final times here. 124 seconds on the Intel machine and 166 seconds on the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra chip. Uh, that's a little disappointing. And I bet all the Linux folks out there are gonna say, well, it's gonna be even faster on a Linux machine. Yeah, yeah. So we're down from 190 on my old workflow to about uh, 166 which is the machine I'm planning to stick with. Although, I don't know. This uh, Intel machine is looking pretty nice right now. They're both desktops. Can't really take them anywhere. I'm gonna do this one more time individually this time to make sure that we're getting consistent numbers. So I'm gonna run the Mac Studio first. Okay, pretty consistent. 160.8 seconds this time on the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra chip. Now, let's try this guy. Okay, before this thing finishes, I kind of know what's gonna happen. I'm guessing that this is gonna get about the same time, around 120. What does that mean? Well, that means that Intel has really done a good job at creating a really performant chip this time. And for my temperature measurements, if placed in a nice, cool, very thermal friendly machine like this, but it's got gigantic fans and it's not super quiet. It's this persistent hum that happens in my left ear. I might have to switch it up later to put it on my right side to balance things out. But it's also done that at the cost of wattage, right? So putting this chip, this 12th generation Intel Core i9 in a laptop, I really doubt that they're gonna get those kinds of numbers. And if you wanna see a video of me comparing the new 12th generation i9 chips to the M1 Max, which I'm really curious about to see how they do in laptop format, then uh, we can try that out. Leave me a comment down below if you wanna see that. I'd be curious myself, but clearly in a desktop, so far we have a clear winner as far as speed and performance, raw power like that. 126 is the result here, folks. I think that speaks for itself. Now let's get to the other test where I'm gonna do a sample application. It's gonna be huge. Here's the voting app on GitHub. It's on Docker samples. It's called Example Voting App. And uh, basically you can just download this and run this yourself. Here it gives you the instructions on how to run it. This is the command we'll be using. And uh, down here, it'll show you the architecture of this entire application. So there's five different instances. And that's what we're gonna start with. I've already cloned these repositories locally, and I'm going to do the same build command that I did for my own project, now for this project, and we're gonna time it. So, oh, and by the way, I've already got all the images local, so we don't need to download anything. All it is is just doing a build. So it's the same command, but uh, this time I wanna see the time. So let's go to the beginning and I'm gonna give it the time command. Okay, now I'm gonna kick that off. That's gonna do its thing. Over here on the Windows machine, if we wanna measure the time that something takes in PowerShell, you have to use uh, a commandlet called measure command. And whatever you wanna run has to be inside these squiggly brackets. Okay, so what we wanna run inside there is the same thing. Docker, pose, and then the build command. And of course, no cash. Let's go. Okay, we have a, a result for the M1 Ultra on the Mac Studio, and that's 15 seconds. Let's run that one more time just to make sure we have consistent numbers here. Okay, 14.61 seconds that time. The Windows machine is done too, and guess what? 14.93 seconds. Very close. I'm gonna run that one more time on the Windows machine. A little bit faster that time on the Windows machine, 13.3, but overall, I'd say these two are pretty consistent and pretty similar. One more test and that's gonna be the big one. I'm gonna spin up 100 instances of this application and we'll see how long that takes. Now, it doesn't make sense to run the build command anymore for when we wanna scale this uh, one of these instances to 100. And uh, let's take a look at the code so you can see what this looks like. Basically, here is the entire project and we have these different instances. And we're gonna scale this worker right here. The worker is a .NET project. It just does processing in the background. This is what that looks like. I mean, you can scale as many of these containers as you want, but we're gonna just do one up to 100. So the command for that is docker compose up is going to basically tell it to start up. Dash D is going to tell it to do it in the background so we can still measure the time and get our console back. Uh, dash dash build is essentially gonna do what we've been doing. It's just gonna rebuild it. And then we give it the dash dash force recreate flag. Now what this flag will do is just recreate those containers from scratch. Finally, we'll give it the scale flag. And this one we have to specify what instance we wanna do, and that's gonna be worker, and how many of them do we want to spin up? We wanna spin up 100 of them. 
And of course, uh, I want to put all this in curly braces and use the measure command commandlet. That way we get the time at the end. All right, let's go. Windows machine is off to the races. So it's going to do its thing. We'll see how long that takes. It might take a little while. Let's set this up on the Mac. Scale worker equals 100. That one is off to the races as well. Now, what worries me a little bit is that um, the Mac is actually displaying things that are happening. Oh, just got an error. Connection refused. You know what? Let's try that one more time. Still got that error. Maybe the Windows one is working. Let's take a look at the containers. Ah, okay. Yeah, look at that. The Windows one started up. We've got quite a lot of these workers. I don't see that there's a hundred of them, but there's quite a lot. And that took 244 seconds total. Docker container LS, no containers. That's not what this one is showing me. The Docker CLI is not showing me any containers. The Docker desktop application is showing me containers. They're not in sync, are they? So Docker CLI is showing me that there are images. At least that's good. Well, we've got a number, 244 seconds. I'm gonna run this one more time because who the heck knows what happened there. Let's do that measure command with force recreate again. And we'll run this one more time. If we get the same time, then that's consistent enough for me. Now on this Mac, I'm gonna restart Docker engine to see if that helps out with this situation. Not 100% sure what's going on there. It worked on my MacBook Air M1. It worked on my MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip, M1 Max chip. Here we go, M1 Ultra is not working. Probably not related to the chip or the computer. It might be a new version of Docker that's not liking this particular command. Wait a minute, look at that. We do have 100 instances of these containers. Then why was it complaining? I don't know. Let's try this one more time. Docker compose up. All right, let's see if that works. See, it's creating the containers and it's bringing them up, but then it gives me this error. I guess the error is after something else. It couldn't connect, but it built that in three seconds. Is that right? It did that last time too. Maybe I just missed it. Yeah, I just did it again and it's 3.4 seconds. It doesn't seem right when I'm using the force recreate flag there. Could it be that on Windows, Docker uses the force recreate to actually recreate the containers, but on a Mac, it doesn't. Anyway, not my fault. I'm going to blame Docker for this. It could be my fault. I don't know. If you know the answer to what's happening, there are clearly containers here and there is about a hundred of them. So it's creating them. I don't think it's creating them in three seconds. That's just crazy. And it took 123 seconds for the second run on the Windows machine. So we're kind of all over the place. This test sucks. I'm not happy about this. You get a little sneak peek on what goes on behind the scenes during these tests. Let's do this one more time. Yeah, it's consistently about three seconds on the Mac. This one was 244, 123. Let's see. I'm gonna run Docker Compose down. Bring down those containers on the Mac. Okay, that matches what happened in the Docker desktop app. Let's run this command again. 2.6 seconds. Clearly something is missing. It's not building. Okay, so we got 123 on the third run on the Windows machine. That seems pretty plausible over there. What's going on? This, this is just boggling. And yeah, something is not right here. Here is the help section for Docker up. I'm using build. I'm using force recreate. I'm using uh, scale. No, I don't believe it. I don't believe that it's actually going to create and build in three and a half seconds. And the reason for that is because when you do build alone, that takes what, 14 seconds or so? This is a real world scenario here. This is not a benchmark. So I'm doing real tests. You might run into problems like this if you're doing your own builds. These are the kinds of problems that we face as developers. And I wanna try to introduce more of these kinds of things into these videos because, well, life is not perfect especially when it comes to dealing with programming. We run into these kinds of problems all the time where we smash our head against the wall for a couple of days and then solutions appear. Hopefully some of the commenters will be able to help out down below. I know there's Docker experts out there, so feel free to comment. And um, yeah, thanks for watching folks. I'll see you next time.